At Pocket Now, we do more than our fair share of comparisons. Most are serious drag races, comparing the features and performance of two very similar smartphones. This is not one of those comparisons. This showdown between wildly dissimilar devices might go down in history as one of our strangest, some would say least necessary, yet. But there's a method to our madness, so let's dive in. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Samsung Galaxy Camera versus Samsung Galaxy S3. These devices have the same heart beating underneath. Under the hood of each is the same Exynos 4412 quad-core Cortex-A9 CPU running at 1.4 GHz. Actually, our Verizon version here packs a Snapdragon for LTE, but for argument's sake, let's call it the international version. They're close kin in displays as well. While the Galaxy camera swaps Super AMOLED for a super clear LCD panel, the displays bear identical measurements. Each is a 4.8-inch 1280x720 capacitive touchscreen at 306 ppi. On those screens, Android runs nearly identically on each unit, with the Galaxy camera running Android 4.1.1 and our Verizon SGS3 running the older 4.0.4. Still, responsiveness and app launch times are so close as to be identical. As I mentioned yesterday in my software tour of the Galaxy camera, this is no hobbled version of Android. You have access to the whole Google Play Store for customization, just like on the S3. Finally, there's more similarities on the radio side, with each device sporting quad-band HSPA in addition to Wi-Fi and regional and carrier variants building in LTE support. See, we're halfway done with this comparison already. Of course, there are substantial differences in these units as well, and we're not just talking about the lack of telephone hardware on the Galaxy camera, meaning no conventionally located speaker and mic, though the device does have both. The Galaxy S3 is a svelte 8.6 millimeters thick and a featherweight 133 grams in the hand, and it disappears easily into a pocket. It's easy to cradle in a hand, and its curved body is quite ergonomic. It's a comfortable device to hold in any orientation. The Galaxy camera is none of that. At 19 millimeters thick, not counting the lens, and a whopping 300 grams, it's a beast, no matter what orientation you hold it in. The preferred orientation is obviously landscape, with two-handed use and your fingers wrapping around the front of the right side grip here. But as we've seen, portrait mode is supported in the software. You just have to get used to grabbing onto the lens cover with your fingers. It actually looks okay in this perspective, almost like a smartphone. It's only when you come around to the side that you realize just how awkward it is to hold. Battery life is another point of variance. The 1650 milliamp-hour pack in the Galaxy camera pales on the spec sheet to the 2100 milliamp-hour unit in the SGS3, and that translates to real-world performance as well. It must take a lot to power the optics and the radios in the Galaxy camera because I've got to charge this sucker every night with even moderate use. And then, of course, there's the camera itself. The SGS3 packs one of the better smartphone cameras we've seen, an 8-megapixel autofocus shooter with a killer set of features built into its viewfinder software, from granular settings to filters to scenes, almost everything you need. But the added bulk of the Galaxy camera means it can accommodate much beefier optics, and the fact that the word camera is a part of the device's name should make the enhanced shooter here no surprise. It's a 16.3 megapixel sensor paired to a wide-angle 23mm lens with 21x optical zoom capability, augmented by a pop-up xenon flash, and with the ability to shoot video in 1080p or 768x512 at 120fps for slow motion capture. For this informal comparison, I captured these shots in out-of-box settings for each device. That means photos from the Galaxy S3 were shot at 8 megapixels, while the Galaxy camera's default setting was 5 megapixels. As a result, the Galaxy camera delivered photos that were a little softer, and its color reproduction was somewhat less vivid than the Galaxy S3, though it did do better in low light. When I cranked the resolution all the way up to 16 megapixels, results got better from the Galaxy camera, but it still didn't seem much more impressive than the SGS3. I'm not sure the optics alone are worth the added weight and size penalty of carrying a second device, but the 21x optical zoom and the much more involved software suite, with many, many, many shooting modes, including expert customizations, definitely is. 
Again, check out our earlier software tour video for more on that. If you're still wondering why anyone would make this comparison between a dedicated camera running Android with an HSPA radio built in and a smartphone that happens to have a camera built in, well, you'll have to tune in next week to find out. Or listen to this week's episode of the Pocket Now Weekly podcast to get a sneak peek and some more candid impressions of the Samsung Galaxy camera. Folks, that's going to do it for our latest comparison and for my last video of 2012. I'd like to thank you for a wonderful year, and uh, I will look forward to seeing you next year. In the meantime, if you like the video, leave us a thumbs up here on YouTube. If you have a comment, leave a comment on the post at pocketnow.com. You can follow us on Twitter at pocketnowtweets. You can follow me on Twitter at Captain Two Phones. We discuss the Galaxy camera, the Galaxy S3, and pretty much every other mobile device imaginable on the Pocket Now Weekly podcast every week. And be sure and check into the Pocket Now Daily broadcast for Jaime Rivera's take on the news almost every day. Once again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next year.